Hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today what I got in store is something pretty cool. I've been wanting to get my hands on this for quite a while. I know it came out a couple months ago, but I finally just got myself to get it. It is the unsanctioned um, Magic the Gathering set. It's kind of like those wacky unsets. Uh, they're not really tournament legal. They're like silver border cards that are just wacky and a lot of fun. And I heard they came out with like sort of like a box set with a couple decks. I think you like mix two of the decks together to kind of make a sort of customized little deck. And then you verse your friends with it. And it just seems like it'd be a really great product. I really like this sort of whole box sets. I'm really excited about it. I just want to open it up with you all and, and check it out. It's interesting. It comes wrapped in the cellophane. It almost looks like a booster box or something like that let's just go ahead and take off the cellophane and then uh let's get a good look at it there we go got the wizards of the coast logo all over the cellophane all righty very cool unsanctioned magic gathering ages 13 plus you got like a goblin with a super long nose right there up against a squirrel and the squirrel has pants on what do you think about that unsanctioned an unruly head-to-head -head fight club and uh it's cool it comes in like a box set um it is like kind of it makes me think of like a board game like it kind of slides out from itself and i'm i really like those kind of sets again unsanctioned you got like some sort of rooster chicken right here on the side here, his feathers bleed over. Two players, uh, 30 minutes, tells you the game. So this is cool, it's kind of sold individually. You can pick this up and play with your friends. You don't need any supplemental uh, supplies or anything like that. You can just play games with this. Uh, unsanctioned, again, you got the chicken and you got the chicken as well. And let's see what's on the back. Uh, get ready for a fight. Welcome to the best unauthorized fight club in the multiverse. Uh, Bash Beaks with five 30-card decks. They bolded five, let you know. Uh, made up of classic silver border card uh, sets and 16 new cards. Okay, so... Um from my knowledge, I thought most of the cards in this set were, were new. But I guess only... 16 cards are new so really not that many new cards i was i was hoping for a little bit more new cards uh the rules are unhinged the stadium is unstable and the things are about to become unglued so that's cool they kind of it's like a reprint set like a master set of the unset so it's kind of cool and they do have 60 new cards uh, i'm a huge fan hopefully they have like the really cool squirrel tokens because it does say there are 10 very cool tokens i do like those old unglued ron spencer tokens really cool two six-sided die Interesting that they don't incl include two 20-sided die, but I guess there's six-sided die probably because there's a bunch of cards that say roll six-sided die. That's probably why. Five 30-card decks with 16 new cards. They want to let you know that there's five and 16. Combine two when you play. So exactly, you, you can say, oh, I want the red deck and the green deck. Shuffle them together and go from there. And it's probably pretty easy to separate them because obviously uh, the five decks are just mono color. So when you're done with it, make a pile of red, make a pile of green, and then you're ready to go. Hopefully there's like five sections in here where the decks kind of lay out nicely. I'm not really sure. Ten ridiculously gorgeous full art lands. Five in premium foil. So you get ten full art lands and five in foil. Um, it'd be cool if they gave you like 24 lands. Uh, you can't really even... You need to buy like two of these boxes to get a full deck's worth of lands. And if you want just one color of land, you might have to end up buying like four boxes or something like that. It'd be cool if they gave you like more of the land so you could literally just take the land from this and put it in your regular deck. Because these lands, they're not silver border, I don't think. So you can put them in just standard Magic the Gathering decks. So it is pretty cool. Uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, da -da, designed by Richard Garfield. Again, two players. You got the goblin and the squirrel right down there. A lot of fun. 30 minute time. You got like a timer there. 2020 Wizards of the Coast. And yeah, the Recycle, the Happy Lion. And that's kind of what the box looks like. It's like a nice cardboard box. Pretty solid feeling. Let's see. Very tight. And I do like how it's a different color. Oh, man. It looks like some fun art. Oh, so it is kind of like a nice setup right here. It's just like... um sort of a uh, blow molded plastic I would say and it looks like there is a space for each of the bot of the decks and it's cool to see that they weren't like th thrown everywhere let's kind of let's just check out the outside of the box right here got like this clam guy he's wearing like old mid like um like old like powdered wig you got this like old lady here singing opera maybe he's got a laser gun got some strange guys heads in a fish tank not sure, like the some sort of like pyromance or electric glove. Just some fun stuff. Is that like Urza doing something? I really like the art, the feel. Uh, best Sons. Looks like some sort of cat warrior and a mouse. Not really sure what that is. Like a fox or a ferret. Looks like marshmallows. 
got some sort of Ant-Man kind of going on, Goblin and the Squirrel in the background, Robot. You got Richard Garfield hanging out there. They probably did reprint it. There was a Planeswalker or some sort of card from back in the day. One of the unsets that was Richard Garfield, probably the most sought after one. Some sort of Planeswalker right there. Is that a ring pop? Almost looks like a ring pop with poison on it. Very bizarre. And then you got the really long nosed goblin, got honeycombs on his head or something, a Tyrannosaurus Rex with glasses, very cool. And yeah, let's just kind of look at everything inside of here, and we're going to go through the cards as well. Very small little pamphlet. Uh, uh, Bok, welcome newcomer, I'll show you how things work around here, trust me, you don't want to ruffle too many feathers. Uh, to fight in the ring, you'll need a team, choose any of the two 30 card decks, shuffle them together into a super colored deck, very cool. I want to. I would like to get these in sleeve, just like penny sleeves or something like that. I wonder if you sleeve these, if they'll fit in these spaces. They might barely. Your opponent does the same. Uh, exactly. So you and your opponent each pick two. Set the unstable deck aside, and then yeah, unsanctioned features some extra amazing basic lands that aren't part of the deck. You won't need these for the match. Slide them in your other decks. Exactly. So these are just like supplemental fancy little land pack right there there are also tokens and dice for you to use keep those handy and let's get ready to squawk got the dice as well and i think the tokens are in there as well and it gives you the um the deck list of all the decks you got green black red blue white i don't think there's many colorless cards in here probably none at all what is the fabulous fantastic asto uh, astounding awesome decks let's take a closer look use these deck lists to help you separate the decks after each match so you can try different color combinations well, maybe there is multicolor cards in these decks because it does include the deck list. You got this green lady against the clam man, against the owl person, against the tyrannosaurus with the glasses, against... Oh, man, I, I forgot. This was a reprinted card right here. It's like something nightmare. I kind of remember that. I think Ron Spencer drew it. Very cool. And, uh, yeah, you got these two kind of nice sort of marbled dice right here. Both very cool. Again, I rolled two fives. <laughs> interesting and let's check out these sort of um these lands you know people really like these lands i really like the the original lands of these 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 are cool got a plains right here by adam parquet and they're just regular magic the gathering backs you got an island nice little foil island again the same artist a swamp. The foiling is a little bit like faint. The gold outlay or outer lay or inlay, whatever, is more shiny than uh, the background. But not too bad. It's got like the symbol down there letting you know it's uh, rare, makes it harder to counterfeit. You got the mountain and you got the forest. Oh, I, I like the forest right there. Very cool. And so it comes with five foils, one of each. And then it gives uh, a bunch of uh, non-foil full art lands, which are pretty sweet. I do like them. I do like the original ones just a little bit better. But very cool. The same artist, Adam Parquet. Got a beautiful plane, sunset in the background. An island, floating island. Spiky, almost thinks of rhinoceros horns or something. The swamp, the kind of mangled up tree. Very dark looking. These are very dark cards. I wish there was a little bit more brightness to them. If that makes sense, they just seem very matte and dark. You got this mountain, very crazy obelisk looking thing. I think it's floating in the sky. It's got like a Swiss cheese holes in it. A beautiful forest. The forest is definitely my favorite one. I just love the, the depth of the trees and everything. It's got a little bit of brightness with the blue. A little bit of wind. Very cool. I think that's all the lands. Okay. Oh, man, they brought back Beebles. I love the Beebles. I have, have um, in one of my collections, I set aside all the Beebles that I have just to have them because I think they're so cool. And he's got just a fork because, uh, yeah, when you're hanging out in the, the sewers, you're going to need a fork. He almost has like a gummy bear type of feel by Jeff Mir uh, Miracola. Is he the original artist of the Meebles? Hopefully. And I think this is the set symbol down here. Looks like two wrenches, the unstable horseshoe. So it's like a mixture of all the unsets. Very cool. Got a bunch of Beebles. Are these double-sided? They are. And then you got a dragon on the back, token creature dragon. That's pretty cool. It's just a generic dragon, a 4-4 dragon with flying. So you could probably put these in other decks. And for whatever reason, there's like a ancient gold dragon maybe. There's like text in the background, like a dungeon and dragon sort of uh, spreadsheet. Beeble with the dragon. Beeble with the dragon. Um, Autumn Rain uh, Turkle drew the dragon as well. Very nice dragon. Another Beeble. So there's a whole lot of Beebles. Oh, I guess uh, on the back of this one is a squirrel token. 
So it isn't the original un squirrel token. It's one of the newer ones. I think it came out in Modern Horizons by uh, Daniel uh, Lungrith, Lundgren. Pretty cool squirrel, but I do like the original one a little bit better. Um, but yeah, he's just like a squirrel jumping from the tree, coming right at the camera. Another Beeble. So there's just a whole bunch of Beebles, a whole bunch of squirrels. I do have a squirrel deck, so maybe these will find a home in there. Unless there's could be decks in here. Probably the green one that pumps out a bunch of squirrels. The blue one probably pumps out a bunch of Beebles. And then you got uh, another Beeble, another squirrel. You got a giant teddy bear, pink fluffy teddy bear, te a token creature, giant teddy bear. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Very cool. It's like there's a carnival in the background. You got a merry-go-round, and this goblin won this teddy bear, and it's his job to drag the thing the whole way home. And you can see there's a cloud of smoke letting you know that he's struggling to get it. Drawn by uh, Adrian uh, uh, Reddick. Bunch of teddy bears. You got a goblin on the back with a really long nose. For whatever reason, he has dynamite on his head, and it's lit, and it's going down, and he has dynamite taped to his shovel, and he's got all these just bombs. This guy's going in for a suicide dive by um, Dave Alsop. Very cool, a giant teddy bear with another goblin on the back, and a giant teddy bear with an acorn stash. What is this? Place your acorn counters in this area. So I guess there's a new mechanic with an acorn counter. Not sure what that is, but very cool. I love squirrels, and maybe this will find a new home. So there's really not a whole lot of uh, the lands. You get 10 lands. 10 lands, five foil, five non. So if you wanna like have a full deck of just the the green foils, you're going to have to buy 24 of these to get 24 green foils. Or if you want just uh, any of the combination, you're going to buy 12 to get like uh, 24 green lands. So yeah, it would be cool if it came with way more lands. Next thing, let's go ahead and check out some of the decks. Let's see. Okay, let's go with the green one first. I do like the unsets, just the art is so much fun. Oh man, they Ron Spencer, did they get him back? Or is this an older one that's a reprint? Where is the pull tab on this thing? Oh, it's right, right in front of me. There we go. This is the green deck. I assume it's probably just green. Looks like right up top you got bingo. I do like how there's this art kind of overlaid on it. It makes me want to kind of brush it off like there's a mosquito on it. Bingo, this crazy cat uh, or like bulldog creature. Such crazy wrinkles in his skin. Ron Spencer, my favorite artist in Magic the Gathering. It's like they're playing bingo on this person. They're like shaving off his skin to reveal the number underneath. One in a green, it's Creature Hound. It's a 1-1 one, one with Trample. And whenever a player casts a spell, put a chip counter on it uh, on its converted mana cost. Okay? Bingo gets plus 9, plus 9 for each set of three numbers in a row with chip counters on it. When a player casts a spell, put a chip counter on its converted mana cost. Oh, so I literally think you play bingo on this guy's back. And then once you get like 1, 5, and 6, he becomes a 10, 10. There was a farmer. He had a hound. So it is a hound. Interesting. And for whatever reason, there's like flies because he must be stinky. Oh, nice. So the old reprints, they literally, they have the same sort of old feel. The old green border. Got old fogey. Two green to summon dinosaur. That's a 7, 7. Phasing, upkeep one, echo, fading three, bands with other dinosaurs, protections from homerids, snow covered planes block, flanking, and rampage two. So it's got like all of the abilities that are just like old. And it's kind of making fun of that. It has like a cane and glasses. Uh, these, ki uh, these kids today with their uh, collector numbers and their new forge tap symbols 20 black lotuses and 20. Uh, Plague Rats. Now that's Real Magic by Douglas Schulter. Very cool. So it's got phasing. It phases in and out. Community upkeep one. So that kind of builds. So each upkeep you're going to have to pay one more. It's got echo. So on your next upkeep you got to pay its mana cost twice plus a community upkeep. It's got banning protection from Homrads which is like a like a crab creature. Very bizarre. Fun thing right there. So it's cool that there is sort of different art. I'm not sure if this is a reprinted card or they really got Ron Spencer to commission some new work. That's very cool. You got uh, Pippa, a Duchess of Dice. This is actually one of the ladies right here. She is the lady of the deck. Pippa, Duchess of Dice. Probably the dice right here. Two and a green legendary creature, human noble. It's a 2-2. Two, two. two green tap, roll a six-sided dice. It becomes a green die creature token with power top is equal to the result. So if you play it, you roll the dice. This thing is now a 4-4. Four, four. 
and then you can attack with it or something. Uh, two and a blue, roll a die, activate this ability anytime it makes sense. <laughs> anytime it makes sense. <laughs> That's good. When it comes to following her orders, it was do and <laughs> it was do and die. Two two by Simon uh, Dominique. Very cool. Um, <laughs> activate this ability anytime it makes sense. I really like that. You got Squirrel Farm right here. Ron Spencer Art. Oh, what is this? You got like a, it's like the Squirrel Wrangler. He's got cobs of corn in his hand, and he's telling the squirrel. He's like, go. He's like conducting them. Two and a green. It's enchantment. Reveal a card. Uh, from your hand, con um, converting the artist, covering the artist credit. Target opponent guesses the artist. If they guess wrong, create a one with green squirrel token. So it's one in a green. You are real card from your hand, and if they guess Ron Spencer, you don't make anything. But if they guess anything else, you make a squirrel token. So very cool. Pump out some squirrels. Got Surgeon General slash Commander. Uh, three and a green. It's a mythic. It's a three three. Whenever you augment, enchant, or mutate a creature card, a creature you control, draw a card. And you can add one man of any color to mana pool. That's very cool. And it looks like some sort of a hybrid of a like badger, a lizard tail, bat wings, and uh, today I feel interesting. Uh, <laughs> likes augmentations, fluffy animals, creative template. And uh, you got Simon Dominique drew it. Very cool. Oh man, this is tiny. This is a split card, except it's uh, five. Oh man, what is this? And you have to look. X and a white for who target player gains X life. For what? It's two and a red. Destroy target artifact. They're all instants. You got when. Two and a blue. Counter target creature spell. You got where. Destroy target land for three and a black. And you got why. Destroy target enchantment for one and a green. This is a very useful card. It's like a utility card. Imagine if you have something like this in your regular deck. Very cool. This is run by Dan Frazier. Got Timmy Power Gamer. Actually opened up one of the unpacks a long time ago on this channel, and I got this card. Two and two green to one one. Four. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's a human gamer, legendary human gamer. And interesting that the border is new and different art. He's wearing a green dinosaur hat, kind of like uh, I've seen a guy on the internet like Pip. He's like a magician comedian. Kind of reminds me of him by Carl Kopinski. And he's got his magic cards in his hand. Very cool. You got bronze calendar. Four mana. It's an artifact. It looks like some sort of cauldron. You're going to make pasta in it. Um, artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. You may speak in a voice other than your normal voice. <laughs> Oh, you must speak in a voice other than your normal voice. When you speak in your normal voice, sacrifice it. So your spells cost less as long as you change your voice. But uh, when you mess up, you got to get rid of it. Every page holds a month. Every date is a numeral. By Melissa A. Benson. Very cool. And she's got her old uh, artist signature right there. You got Elvish Impersonator. Obviously doing a knock on Elvis. Three in a green. He's an elf. With his elf ears, dressed up as Elvis in the background. He must have been to Vegas. Oh, uh -huh. Creature Elves. As Elvish Impersonators enters the battlefield, roll six out of dice. Its base power becomes the first result, and its base toughness becomes the second result. So you roll dice twice. First number's power, second number toughness. Very cool. Hmm. By Clamor L. Fladu? Flapadool? I'm not really sure. Got Entirely Normal Armchair. Looks like a chair that looks like a bear trap. You sit on it. You got a cookie in the nightlight. Looks comfy. Artifact during your... It looks like a zero-cost artifact. During your turn, if entirely normal armchairs in your hand, you may hide it on the battlefield. What? Return entirely normal armchair to its owner's hand. Only any opponent may activate this ability, and only if they see entirely normal armchair. You pay two sacrifice armchair, destroy target attacking creature. So you kind of got to sneak it out. This is a fun card right here. I do like this. Uh, I do like this. By Tom uh, Bradley. And literally, you kind of sneak it out on the battlefield. And if someone notices it, they make you return it to the hand. But if you don't, you can use it to destroy target attacking creature. You got free range chicken. Three and a green. It's a creature bird. It's a 3-3 three, three for one and a green. Roll two six-sided die. If both results are the same... Free range chicken gets plus X plus X till in the turn where X is that result. If the total of those results is equal to any other total you've rolled for this turn, sacrifice it. For example, if you rolled two threes, it gets plus two through three. If you rolled four and a two, um, you got to sacrifice it. So 
If you do its ability, you kind of got to get lucky. But it's a free range chicken by Mike Arabe. And the back of the cards look the same. They don't have the silver border on the back. Just the front does. You got growth spurt. I do love this. It looks so real. Looks like it's really ripped. I love how the border is broken. The card frame is just broken. It's like Alice in Wonderland. He ate that cookie or whatever and just grew. One in a green. Instant roll. Six sided die. Target creature gets plus X plus X till end of turn where X is results. More to love. Friendly natured loving. Um... Bunyan, Bunyiski, Sem, Seek, Sef, looking for a huge commitment. I'm not sure. Jeff, um, Lauberstein. So it looks like an ad for a dating service. I love how the border is broken. Oh, these are those squirrels. These are those cards you can kind of meld together. You got half squirrel, half something. Uh, whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield, it looks like this ability will maybe link up with another ability. It's got Augment for one green. Reveal this card from your hand. Combine it with target host. Augment only as a sorcery. It's got this green color here, so it is still a green card. It's a negative one, negative zero. So if you don't augment it, it just dies. So you can you can play it by itself, I think, for its cost of zero, but it would just die. By um, Andrew Reddick. Just a giant squirrel running through the, uh, the, the pasture. And I do like how there's like a tube there. And like uh, for this one, this one, it's got like the tube there as well. So you can can kind of combine it. This is a mother kangaroo four and a green. When this creature enters the battlefield, uh, roll a six out of die. Put a number of one one counters on this creature equal to the result. So one one by Andre Reddick. So I guess you can play this one first. Then you augment this on top of it. So this thing becomes a half squirrel, half kangaroo. With when, uh, whenever non-token creature enters the battlefield, roll a six-sided die, put a number of 1-1 one -one counters on this creature, equal to uh, the result. So very cool. I like how these cards play with each other. Very cool. Got Slaying Mantis, 5 and 2 green. It's a creature insect warrior. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Just a second. As long as this... It's almost like split second. As long as this spell is on the stack, players can't move cards on the battlefield. Can't move cards on the battlefield. I guess you can't tap or untap or anything like that. Interesting. Slaying Mantis enters the battlefield by throwing, being thrown from a distance or at least three feet. What? When Slaying Mantis enters the battlefield, it fights each creature and opponent controls that it touched as it enters a 6-6 six, six, and you gotta fling it from at least three feet. And if it lands across most of their creatures, it fights them all. And I love this. It's like a wrestler. It's literally jumping off of the fence, slamming everybody. They're Lucha Libres. How fun is that? By Ben uh, Wooten. This is this is a fun set. These will be some fun games to play for sure. Got Spirit of the Season. It's like this giant tree folk creature. He's watering things. He's got an an oven mitt and he's got a scythe for one and, a, and two green. He's got all the seasons. Yeah, you know, green, winter, fall. I do like that. By Irham Elmishli El Malish. When a Spirit of the Seasons enters the battlefield, it gains haste. If it's a summoner, put a one one counter on it. If it's Autumn, you get plus, you gain five life. If it's winter, if it's spring, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay, so you choose the season. Oh no, it it. I guess like since now it's summer. If it if it's summer, you put a one with counter. So this is this is a seasonal card. It changes with the seasons. That's very interesting. That's fun. That's a fun card right there. I'm I'm loving this stuff. Got Wild Crocodile. This is one of those cards that you can put together. One in the green. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Then shove your library. So it's like a just a one one creature for two mana that can fuse with something. Very cool. By uh, Brian Methenly. Okay. Got Underdome. Looks like some sort of wrestling rink. Got blood and all sorts of nasty stuff. Empty crowd. By Matt uh, Gazer. Uh, tap to add colors to mana pool. Add, uh, tap to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to play silver border costs. So pretty much anything in the unsets. In the battlefield of the ring, the rules aren't nearly so black and white. Very cool. Nice little land. And it does look like they're regular lands. So you can use these in other magic decks if you'd like. And they're all the same art. By Mark Pool, very cool. They got a nice Mark Pool land. Did he hide? Uh, did he hide a lizard anywhere? Sometimes he'd hide a salamander. I don't know. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. But beautiful, beautiful art. All right, so that is the green deck. 
let's go ahead and check out the red deck. Alrighty, the red deck time. Look at that blast from the past. It's got flashback. It's like making fun of like Odyssey or something like that. Where's this? Here we go. Blast from the past. I love the gravestone up there because it means it has flashback. Two in a red. It's got madness for one red, cycling for one in a red, kicker for two in a red, flashback for three in a red, and buyback for four in a red. Blast from the past deals two damage to any target. If this spells would kick, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. So you can kind of keep playing this. You can play it for its madness. You can cycle it, kick it, flash it back, or buy back, and you can make some tokens. By Douglas Shelter, beautiful. This, like... Uh, cleric guy is literally lightning bowling this poor soul right through his heart. Boom. Love the brightness in the colors. Fantastic. You got Boom Stacker. Two in a red. It's a goblin artificer. It's a zero zero creature. As it enters the battlefield, whenever it attacks, stack two dice on top of it. All the dice must be stacked vertically, uh, one on top of the other. Okay. Boom Stack gets plus one plus one for each dice in its stack. It attacks for each uh, combat of able. When the stack falls, sacrifice it. So I guess it stacks dice on it. So you stack two dice. Uh, I guess maybe there's a card that can add to the stack. But yeah, it'd be cool if there was something that said add a dice to the stack by Jesper Esping. Very cool. He's got his sort of candlelight thing. He's got dynamite lit on his body for whatever reason. Kind of dangerous. Got a mythic card right here. Got infinity elemental. Four and three red. I do like the infinity effect of the border. It's kind of just going in on itself. It's like this rock warrior punching into it. This creature has infinity power. Oh, it has infinity power. Infinity power in five. It's so infinity that its flavor text says. It's so infinity that its flavor text says. Okay. Uh, Seb McKinnon. This is crazy. It has infinity power. If you get this on the battlefield, if you can give it trample, you just win the game. That's it. If you can get a trample and get the damage through, you win the game. Um, that's a fun card right there. <laughs> but it has five toughness, so it can be destroyed by Seb McKinnon. He's one of my favorite artists as well. So there is a colorless card. I think there was colors in the other deck as well. So that's why the deck lists are included. So you know which colorless cards go with which deck. Got Pointy Finger of Doom. Absolutely fantastic. Four generic mana artifact. Three tap. Spin Pointy Finger of Doom in the middle of the table so that it rotates completely at least once then destroy closest permanent that it points to nails and destruction on point okay by martina pelakrova and yeah so you put it you spin it whatever it points at you destroy so you could be destroying your stuff as well be careful got steet uh draconic proofreader it's like a dragon proofreader, 4 and 2 red. It's a 4 4, probably has something to do with text flying. And whenever a stet draconic proofreader attacks, you may exile a card from your graveyard. When you do, it deals 4 damage to any target whose name begins with the same letter as the card exiled. Okay, so if you exile a card that says like uh, stet, if something has an S in its name, you can uh, exile it. Or uh, no, 4 damage to it. Uh, white, delete the first letter of target permanent or player's name until end of turn. Oh, so if your player's name, you can even <laughs> do it to your player and you can get rid of one of their letters. So you can pay two white to get rid of two letters or something like that. Very cool. Four mana for, I mean, four and two red for four for flying by Dimitri Burmek. And it's like blowing some blue smoke out at these like poor mice creatures right there. Fantastic. Oh, this is like Wheel of Fortune. Um, strategy, uh, schmategy. Four and red, spin the dice. You got the... Sad face, you got glasses and mustache, you got a, a rooster, you got a dinosaur, you got a crossbow and a broken egg. And you got this wizard goblin right there spinning it, saying, press your luck. Sorcery, roll a six-sided die. And obviously, that's why they included the die. There's quite a few cards that use six-sided die. Strategy, schmategy has in it, um, indicated effects. One, do nothing. Two, destroy all artifacts. Three, destroy all lands. Four, strategy, schmategy does three damage to each creature and player. Five, each player discards his or her hand to draw seven cards. There's a flashback to the original um, Wheel of Fortune. And then repeat this process two or more times. That's cool. It would be cool to get like six. Um, yeah. By Daniel Gleon. 
Fun car right there. There's a whole things that can do. It's a sorcery. It'd be way cooler if it was an enchantment. You can just keep doing it. That would be fun. Pay like one, roll the dice. Very cool. I like that. Yet another Aether Vortex. Looks like Jeffrey from um, Toys R Us. He came back and then he got sucked in. You got the donkey creature. You got the chicken. You got a goblin. You got the poor warrior. You got a fish head guy. Three and two red. It's enchantment. All players, all creatures have haste. Players play with the top card of the libraries revealed. Non-instant, non-sorcery cards in the top of libraries are on the battlefield under the owner's control in addition to being on the library. So interesting, if you have like a creature on top of your library, it's kind of in two places at once. It's in the library and also on the battlefield. You can literally attack with it if it has haste. Oh, it does have haste. Very interesting. It puts the vortex in flavor text. <laughs> By David Day. Fun art. Fun card. And now it looks like I'm on the uncommons. You got abstract iguana art. Looks like the iguana is taking the shape of whatever the artist is painting, or literally he's painting it. One in a red creature art lizard. It's a 1 1. Whenever you cast a spell, note the first letters and the artist's name. If that letter wasn't already noted, put a 1 1 counter on abstract iguana. So if you play a spell and the artist says first name starts with a D and you haven't done D before, he gets bigger. Another moving piece by the artist El Gecko by Chris uh, Silliman. Cool. Looks like I got another sort of uh, split card. I don't, I don't even know what they're called. I guess fuse cards. Host creature. It's a lizard. It's a one and a red. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. So it has loot. And it's a 1-3. By Brian uh, Methenley. Very cool. Another iguana. Hanging out in the desert. Got goblin haberdasher. I think haberdasher means he likes hats. And that's exactly what he does. And he was on the side of the box somewhere. Here he is. The Haberdasher, Creature, Goblin, Hatificer. And it's got Menace. This creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Other creatures you control wearing hats or their in their arts have Menace. An accessory in every sense of the world. It's so a 2-2 by Jesper Espling. And as long as your creature has a hat, this, it looks like... Uh, I don't know, but I'm sure there's art in here where a lot of the creatures have hats. This um, gives it Menace. Very cool. Very fun. Looks like I got Goblin SWAT, SWAT team, three in a red, creature Goblin Warrior. They have their giant swatters. They're running through the desert. And uh, yeah, say Goblin SWAT team, put a woman counter Goblin SWAT team. Unless an opponent swats a table within five seconds, activate this ability only once it's turned. It's a 2-2. Two -two. You got to say Goblin SWAT team. And if they don't catch it and they don't slap the table, this guy just keeps getting bigger and bigger. They refer to their methods as special SWAT tactics. And no one has lived to correct them. By Eric Deschamps. Very cool. I got Goblin Tutor. Oh, man, this art is fantastic. Look at that. It's like pencil work right there. Or watercolor. It's just hard to tell. I just love that art. So busy. So much going on. I could spend a lot of time looking at that. She's got a whole bunch of goblins. Some of them almost morph into each other. Got this elderly goblin holding up this orb. Kind of telling them how things work. Chalkboard in the background. He's teaching these people how to play. One red. It's an instant by... Uh, Quentin Hoover, roll a six-sided die. If you roll a one, Goblin Tutor has no effect. Otherwise, search your library for the indicated card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. Two, a card named Goblin Tutor, an enchantment, an artifact, a creature, an instant, a sorcery. Very cool. So you can tutor up things depending on how nice your dice is to you. Oh, man, you got a lucky thumb. Uh, crack hurts other thumb. It's like a rabbit foot. That's cool art, though, by Jeff Miracola. It's got, like, a wrinkly, bumpy, warty thumb with a nasty, jagged nail. Looks like it's exploding in the background like it's some artifact, a legendary artifact of two. If you would roll a dice and said roll two of those dice and ignore one of those rolls. That's cool, so you kind of get two for your thing. Kark was a kind of goblin who'd lose his thumb if in a wager and come right back with double or nothing. <laughs> Jeff Miracola. Hopefully he gets his thumb back, otherwise he's losing them both. <laughs> what a fool. You got... Uh, Panic? P Paniac? Not really sure, but uh, this is, um, this was somewhere on the box, I believe. Here we go, on the side of the box. It's a creature, Brainiac, two in a red at the beginning of your upkeep, roll a six out of die. Paniac gets X plus zero until end from X is a result. You're about to be struck by the brilliant idea. It's a zero three by McLeal Kendry. Cool art. Looks like he has like an orb on her head. And she's coming at you with her lightning punches. Very cool. 
Oh, they brought back Scissor Lizard. So they must be Scissor Lizard, Rock Lobster, and Paper Tiger. Uh, four arti four mana artifact. Creatures named Paper Tiger can't attack or block. So in the other decks, there's got to be the other two. It's a 4-3. Nothing beats Lizard Shear Power because it's literally made out of scissors or shears. Fantastic art by Heather Hudson. Such a fun interpretation on a lizard. Love it. And uh, a cool way to start a game off is actually you can just keep these in your decks. You keep a Scissor Lizard, Rock Lobster, and Paper Tiger. And you put three of them on the battlefield. You each pick one. Whoever wins uh, goes first instead of rolling a die. It could be a fun thing. Got 60 Beast. Three in a red. Looks like a uh, Witch's Fingers. A strange looking lamb sort of eye with the elongated pupil. And Worm Shot of Tail. By Anson Maddox, it's a 0 0. As 60 Beast enters the battlefield, you secretly put six or few 1 1 counters on it. Okay. Uh, then an opponent guesses number of counters. If the player guesses right, sacrifice it. Uh, 60 Beast after it enters the battlefield. So you want to guess a number. And if your opponent guesses it, um, they you have to kill this thing. But cool. Is it 6? <laughs> Honestly, sometimes 6 might be safe because people probably will think that 6 is obvious. I don't know. Very fun. That's fun. Super duper death rate. You got another sort of uh, these warriors. You got the crazy googly eyes right there. Crazy eyes. And you got like a servant in the background with tea and crumpets. Makes me think of um, the Nightmare Before Christmas. 2 in a red. Instant trample. Super duper death rate deals 4 damage to target creature. Oh, that's cool. So it has trample. Uh, coming through by um, Evan Edmonton. It looks like I got Underdome again. And then I guess uh, the uh, mountains. Is it drawn by R Rob Alexander? Beautiful mountains. All right. A couple more decks to check out. All right. We got here the black deck. I think they're going to have that card with those, those squirrels, the nightmare creatures or whatever. Got a Cornelia fashionable felcher. So it's like some diva squirrel with her huge safe locking in her golden acorns. She's got a strange little contraption holding an umbrella over her head or his head just to keep off the sun and rain. Uh, evil genius. Three in a black. Whenever you cast a spell with a squirrel and in the art you get a nut emblem. An acorn counter. There, that's what the acorn counters are which I believe is on this. Or this one. I don't know. There's an acorn counter. Whenever a squirrel you control enters the battlefield or dies, you get an acorn. Tuna black, pay X acorns. Target creature gets negative X, negative X on the turn. Green, pay X acorns. Target creature gets plus X, plus X on the turn. It's a 3-3 three, three by uh, Bream uh, Cells. I like the art. Very cool. Looks like you got Enter the Dungeon. Two blacks, a sorcery. Fun art right there by Luca uh, Zoltini. Players uh, play a magic sum game under the table. It's like Shahrazad. Uh, st starting at five life and using their libraries as decks, the winner searches their library for two cards, put those cards in their hands, then shuffle their library. Okay, so you kind of play a sub game of magic um, before you finish the other game. That's kind of cool. So it's like a mini game inside the game. You got uh, two of these two planeswalkers versing each other. That's fun. Here we go, Infernal Spawn of Evil. This is the card I was thinking of by Ron Spencer. Love the art. So this is an old reprint card right here, but kind of a new border. So I'm guessing they didn't really commission Ron Spencer. He's got his, his nice little pot belly, his comfy looking scarf, his thing of hot cocoa with the marshmallow steaming, standing in the ice. Fantastic art, six and three black. And looking at the art, it doesn't look evil, but yeah, it makes me think of the South Park episode. It's got flying in first strike. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> one in a black. Reveal Infernal Spawn of Evil from your hand. Say, it's coming. Infernal Spawn of Evil deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Activate this ability only during your upkeep and once each turn. So you can get a damage through by revealing it and saying, it's coming. And it's fun. This thing has first strike and flying. You wouldn't think it, but this thing is evil. Infernal Spawn of Infernal Spawn of Evil. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> maybe they did get Ron Spencer to come back and commission new art because this thing is older in age and it's bored child. Eight and two black. So uh, uh, creature beast child got flying first strike and trample. Once each turn while you're searching a library, you may pay one in a black, real infernal spawn of infernal spawn of evil from your library and say, I'm coming too. If you do, infernal spawn of infernal spawn of evil deals two damage to a player of your choice. It's an 8 8. 
So it's a little bit bigger than this guy, but fantastic. It's actually uh, the same. Um, is it the same mana cost? Six, seven, eight, nine. No, uh, yeah, there's a different. But yeah, fun. Best dad. Black's best dad. The black mana best dad. Oh, no. It just kind of continues. Infernius Spawnington 3 Esquire. 10 in a black. And <laughs> the grandfather now has another child and then another child. It's got the evil Binky. His poor coffee cup from the first generation has a crack in it, but he's still rocking it. Very cool. And he's got his cane, and they're just hanging out in the same land right there. How fun is this? Ron Spencer. Love his art. Um, creature, it's a beast, demon, uh, demon, beast, grandchild, <laughs> flying, first strike, trample, and haste. This spell costs three less to cast for each card revealed this turn. When Infernus, Infernius Spawnington, three Esquire, enters the battlefield, you may say, I'm here. If you do, it deals three damage to the target player. I see evil, hear evil, speak evil. It's a 9-9. Nine, nine. This thing is a beast. This is a fun deck. I'm probably going to play with this deck. That is just ridiculous. Oh, they got Jack in the Mox. This is a... They brought this back. It's like a It's like a Mox. It's a Mox that I can afford. It's an artifact. You got the Jack in the Box pumping out at you. Kind of creepy. It's got the Mox Emerald there. Mox Sapphire. Mox uh, or Ruby. Mox Sapphire. You got all the Moxins right there. Very cool. Roll six-sided die. Activate ability. Uh, this ability has... Indicated effects. One, sacrifice it. You lose five life. Two, white. Three, blue. Four, black. Five, red. Six, green by Dan Fraser. Very cool. Looks like I got a half of a creature right here. You got bat something. At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost three more life this turn, you do something. He's got augment for one and a green, so you play with that. It's plus one, plus one. And it's a black creature, and it's kind of a creepy bat. You got Booster Tutor. Oh, this is fun. I've, I've heard of this. This is actually, I think they made this for like a holiday set. Booster Tutor, one black. It's an instant. Open a sealed boot mag magic booster pack. Reveal the cards and put one of them into your hand. Removing, remove that card from your deck uh, before beginning a new game. Okay. Yeah, so take it out of your deck after. You save the Urza Saga pack all these years for this. Very cool. So it's fun. But like, um, it kind of stinks that this is in this deck because if you're going to be mixing black in your decks, you're going to want to have a, a booster pack ready for it. So I kind of wish it didn't include this uh, by Heather Hudson. Very cool. I guess I'll just have a sideboard for that. And the sideboard, I'll just shuffle up cards and pick one or something. You got Dirty Rat. Nasty thing. That's really great art, though, by Carl uh, Christensen. Uh, target opponent discards a card when it enters the battlefield. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 in black, so it's like Ravenous Rats. I love that card, and it's super hyper-realistic art. Fantastic. And you can blend it with a bat if you want, so it's a bat rat. That's fun right there. You got, duh, look at that. They put a sticky note in there. You got this sort of uh, griffin creature breaking the lightning, going through a portal or something. One black instant destroy target creature with reminder text. Reminder text is any italicized text in parentheses that explains the rules you already know. Will players understand that this creature is being crushed by uh, two parentheses? Not a chance. I didn't know that. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> well, at least the flavor text was there to save me. My Dave Norman... Fun are right there. Duh. Got Hostile Hiraling. Looks like some sort of creepy looking thing. It looks like he's being hoisted up by some like uh, crane. Two and a black creature zombie. Nice zombie. By Alex uh, Constant. Two and a one. Enter. Uh, it has flying as long as it's being held above the battlefield. <laughs> so you gotta kind of. I guess when you attack with it, you gotta hold it and hoist it. So it kind of has flying. <laughs> Zarv no longer trusts the kitten uh, posters telling him to hang in there that's fun looks like you got inhumanatic one in a black it's a creature brainiac it's a one one by matt uh, dixon at the beginning of your upkeep roll a six-sided die on three or four put a one one counter on it on five or higher put two one one counters on it on one remove all one one counters on it so it's a one one that can kind of uh get bigger or go back down because it's kind of an unstable creature Cool art, though. I like the green head and the nice little valve. Makes me think of a big daddy. You got Jumbo Imp. Oh, man. It's like the imp, except he's all chained up. He's got a sad look on his face, and he's got tiny little wings. Does he have flying? He does. Two and a black. It's a zero-zero flying. 
Uh, as Jumbo Imp enters the battlefield, roll a six-sided die. Jumbo Imp enters the battlefield with a number of 1-1 one -one counters on it equal to the result. At the beginning of your upkeep, roll a six-sided die and put a number of 1-1 one -one counters on Jumbo Imp equal to the result. Okay, at the beginning of your end step, roll a six-sided die and remove the number of 1-1 one -one counters on it equal to the result. So, it enters the battlefield, you roll a die. At the beginning of your upkeep, you roll a die. and the end of your upkeep, you roll a die. And it kind of, his, his power and toughness kind of goes all, probably all over the place. And he could end up hurting himself by Pete Ventures. You got poultry geist. How cool is that? It's not a poltergeist, it's a poultry geist. Makes you think of Kamigawa stuff, some spirit. And it's a chicken, which is poultry. Two and a black. It's a creature bird spirit. I do like how the art kind of extends past the borders. Flying. Whenever a creature dies, you may roll a six sided die. If you roll a one, sacrifice poultry geist. Otherwise, put a one one counter on it. Farmer Brown never ate eggs again. It's a one one by Darren Batter. He ate the egg, and the chicken kept growing in poultry land or poultry geist land. But really great art. I got Skull Saucer. Hey, this art is somewhere on here. I saw it on here. Here we go. Boom. I thought it was a fish tank, but it's in some sort of saucer. Coming at you, it's a creature zombie head. Makes me think of uh, Baron Manchester's Adventures, where um, Robin Williams is that flying head. Flying, it's a 4 1. When Skull Saucer enters a battlefield, destroy target creature and put your head on the table. Sacrifice Skull Saucer when your head stops touching the table. Oh man, so uh, obviously when you draw your next card, uh, you got to, <laughs> you got it somehow, I don't know, this is a strange one, Mike uh, Burnus, so pretty much whenever you lift up your head, he, he goes away, but uh, if you can somehow play the game through proxy, have your friend come and help you, then maybe you can keep going. Got sickening, uh, snickering squirrels. He's got a squirrel stash going on right there. He's got like a golden nose. He's got blue eyes. He's got other squirrels in the background. The other squirrels look pretty normal. This one looks a little bit different. One black. Snick, uh, squirrel Advisor. It's a 1-1. One, one. You may tap Snickering Squirrels to increase the result of die. Any player rolled by one. That's cool. You can throw off your opponent or help yourself. Uh, either lower or... That's, that's pretty cool. In the line of work, uh, you've got to know how squirrels... Uh, how to squirrel things away, quite literally, in my case, by Michael Philippi. He got a stinging scorpion, one of those uh, host creatures. Four and a black is a 3-2. Target creature and opponent goes. It's negative one, negative one till end of turn. By YW Tang. Nice little scorpion. And then you got the Underdome. So I'm assuming they all have Underdome. And then obviously the lands as well. By uh, Mike uh, Birelic. Cool. I like the little stream going down the middle. A little bit of brightness. Dark trees, a little bit of like like uh, fire bugs in the sky. Very cool. We got two more decks to check out. Okay, looks like we're on the blue deck right here, and you got the sort of uh, the clamshell guy with his super soaker in his sort of uh, olden time English powdered wig sort of get up. Very fun. You got an. Alexander Clamble, <laughs> get out of here. Two and a blue, legendary creature. Clam Folk Advisor Rebel. Whenever you cast a wordy spell, uh, scry two. Spell is wordy if it has four or more lines of rule text. Okay, it's a zero four. One and a red tap. Choose target creature you don't control. Reveal the top card of your library. Alexander Clamington gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is number of lines of rules. Uh, text of revealed cards. Alexander Clamington fights that creature. Okay, by Dimitri Burmak. Hopefully they have um, the uh, the cool um, the reprint card of, uh, I can't even think of his name, of this guy. It'd be cool if they have that. Got Avatar of Me. He's like some sort of, uh, this is him, and this is how he sees himself in the mirror. He's like some sort of diva with his skin-tight leggings dancing or whatever, whatever. Two and a blue. Creature Avatar, it's a star star. This spell costs one more to cast for each uh, 10 years you've been alive. <laughs> so the older you are, the harder it is to get out there. Avatar of me, uh, powers equal to your height in feet and toughness equal to your American shoe size right to the nearest half. Avatar of me is the color of your eyes. Okay, that's pretty fun right there. So for me, this card would cost, uh, what is that? This six mana and about like uh like f five or six toughness it depends if you round up and then my and then like uh then like 11 toughness 
yeah, Avatar Me and then he's blue <laughs> by Greg uh, Hildebrandt. Fun. <laughs> oh man, there's like a Beast Beeble Planeswalker. B O B. Bring your own Beeble's. Bev of Beeble's. Not sure, really sure. I can't really read that. Three and two uh, blue. Legendary Planeswalker. B O B. As B O B. Bevy of Beeble's enters the battlefield, create four blue Beeble's tokens, one ones. The number of loyalty counters on B O B is equal to the number of Beeble's you control. Create or sacrifice Beeble's. Whenever BOB gains or loses loyalty. Okay. Plus one. Uh, up to X target Beebles can't be blocked this turn where X is the number of cards in your hand. Okay. And negative one draw card. Very cool. So that's where all the Beebles come into play. All of the Beebles with their forks. You'll have a, a whole bunch of them. So they give you a lot of Beeble tokens, obviously, because they expect you're going to make them by Jeff Miracola. Fantastic. I love the Beebles. They're so much fun, so much flavor. There's these little, like, sort of gummy bear looking creatures, these mythical creatures. Uh, makes me think of like the soot monsters from like a spirited away or something and they're just living inside these tubes climbing all over the place some of them look evil some look fun they're all the different emotions very cool we got chicken a la king and uh oh wow he's like uh he's like a fancy chicken is this a piece of chicken in the background no that's corn over there and you got a beautiful picture by mark zug this is a beautiful art one and two blue creature birds a two two whenever a six is rolled in a six out of dice put a one one counter on each bird you may roll dice only when instructed to tap an untap bird you control roll six out of die okay like now uh during the chicken revolution the king managed to keep his head while the others uh well just ran around very cool it is Chicken of the King. He got Johnny Combo Player. Oh, this is the card that I pulled. Not the other card. Okay, Johnny Combo Player. I guess the green card... I'm curious. What green card was I talking about that I thought I pulled? Timmy Power Gamer. No, I pulled this one. I pulled this on the pack. Uh, Johnny Combo Gamer. Uh, four, search your library for a card. Put that card in your hand and shuffle your library. So you can tutor it up to 1-1 one, one for 2 and a blue. Legendary Creature Human Gamer. He's a magic master. He's throwing all sorts of cards at you. What cards does he have there? I can't even tell. No, I can't really read it. Just wait till I get my Kraken Clan, Ironworks, Genesis Chamber, and a Grinding Station. Oh, yeah. And the second Mirror uh, Retriever by uh, Kalensky Okinbayashi. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, they do have it. They did bring back Richard Garfield. That's what I meant. Very cool. You got Richard Garfield, PhD, the creator of magic. He's got a halo of mana around him. He's holding up his card like some sort of uh, religious figure or icon. Three and two blue, legendary creature, human design. It's a two-two. You may play cards as though they were other cards of your choice with the same mana cost. You can't choose the same card twice. Mana cost includes color. And yeah, he doesn't speak. And yeah, and yeah. He doth speak, let there be magic. By Dave Dorman. Very cool. So I guess you can kind of swap cards out with each other. Very cool. You got Water Gun Balloon Game. There we go. There's the giant teddy bear. You got to shoot him in the mouth to make the balloon rise and you can win the teddy bear. It's a two generic card artifact. When, As Water Gun Balloon Game enters the battlefield, each player puts a pop counter on, on O. I don't know. Whenever a player casts a spell, move that player's pop counter up one. Whenever a player pop uh, counter hits five, that player creates a 5-5 five, five pink giant teddy bear creature token. Uh, and uh, resets all pop counters to zero. So, uh, okay. Each person gets a pop counter with zero. And then every time you play a spell, that pop counter goes up. Once you get five, you make a big old uh, pink uh, teddy bear. There's a pink teddy bear. We, we looked at it earlier. Because... Uh, it's like you won the carnival game. Where's the teddy bear? Do, 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 do. I swear, they're like here. Where is the teddy bear? Where did I put it? Oh, right here. So that's funny. You kind of win that, like a carnival game. Oop. I do like how they brought back Richard Garfield as well by Mark Brill. Got Carnivorous Death Parrot, of course, because it's a death parrot. He literally ripped off some poor soul's arm, one in a blue. It's flying. You got the blood dripping. That almost made me think I was <laughs> bleeding from my cut. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Carnivorous Death Parrot, unless you say it's flavor text. Save a kill spell to deal with this guy. Save a kill spell to deal with this guy. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. 
Greg Hildebrandt. And this parrot flying at you with an arm. Got a cheaty face. Uh, blank and two blue. So it's like the Dijin. It's making fun of creature or free. It's a 2-2. If it's in your hand, you may sneak cheaty face on the battlefield. If an opponent catches it right away, that player exiles it. It's got flying, so you can kind of cheat onto the battlefield. Otherwise, it's two mana for a fl uh, flying by Doug uh, Chaffee. Very cool. You got Common Courtesy. Uh, you got the old monk and some guy in the background, and he's melting something away. 2-1-2 two, two blue. It's an enchantment. Whenever you play... Whenever a player casts a spell without asking permission while casting it, counter that spell. Whenever a player asks you permission to cast a spell and you refuse, counter that spell and sacrifice common courtesy. Uh, you didn't say uh, the magic word by Mike Rabbe. Interesting. So um, when you get this in the battlefield, you say, can I play a spell? And if they say, yes, you can play it. But if not, <laughs> you get to counter it. That's kind of fun. You got magic word. Okay. Two and a blue. Enchant creature. Enchant aura. He's got a top hat. You got the goblin over there. He's got his uh, stopwatch right there, and uh, his pocket watch. And an interesting thing popping out of his hat. You got quiet, please. Session in progress. So he's hypnotizing him. As magic word enters the battlefield, choose a word. Whisper the chosen word. Tap enchanted creature. Okay, so you kind of pick the word by Carl Frank. You can say Alakazam. You got Merman. <laughs> it's a Merman. And uh, opposite. It's a fish head with f uh, human feet. Not the kind of thing you're thinking of. Four and a blue. Human fish. You may draw cards at 3 3 by Mark uh, Bellum. Very cool. Got Rings a Bell. Two and a blue. Two and two blue. Enchantment. As Ring the Bell enters the battlefield, choose a word with four more letters. After you say the chosen word for the first time each turn, an opponent may ring or imitate a bell within five seconds. When no opponent does, draw a card. Ding, ding, ding by Chris uh, Siemens. Okay, so you can say the word once each turn. If no one rings a bell, you draw a card. Oh, there you go. There's the rock lobster. Uh, creatures named Scissor Lizards can't attack our blocks. We beat Scissor Lizards. 4-4. Four, four. Many take the lobster for granite, and that's what it is. It's granite. Four four. It's a four uh, artifact for four three by Heather Hudson. Got timeout. This poor little goblin. He's in a timeout jar with the timer on it, counting down in front of all these cookies, and he's got his nose pressed against it, watching this big old rat with his proboscis it's eating it. Instant for four and a blue. Roll six out of die. Put target nonland permanent into its owner's hand. Uh, owner's library just beneath the top X cards of the library, where X is a result. Anyone other than the goblin would have gotten. Only a hand caught in the cookie jar. He got his whole body in the cookie jar by Dave Alsop. No one knows how he got all the cookies out, but him stuff stuck in there. Topsy turvy. This card's up and down probably for a reason. Uh, two and a blue. Oh, interesting. The art is supposed to be this way. And uh, gravity's kicking in and knocking their swords away. Enchantment. The phases of each player's turn are reversed. The phases are in reverse order, ending post-combat main, combat, post-combat main, and beginning. So you draw at the end of your turn. As long as there are more than two players in the game, the turn orders are... As long as there are more than two players in the game, the turn order is reversed. Here ongoing is heck what? Jeff Miracola. Fun. Got the Beebles. Maybe that was supposed to, I don't know. And then the whole thing kind of flipped around after that. Got Wall of Fortune, uh, one in a blue. Got all these kind of fancy dice, the cogs of time. This knight is there bending down saying, what shall I roll? It's an artifact wall, defender, it's a zero four. You may tap and untap while you control to have any player uh, re-roll a die that player rolled. You need a six. All right, everyone, she needs a six by Tom Bradley. They must commune with the dice gods. Very cool. And then you got the Underdome. And then obviously the Lands. Is it by Mark Poole? Nope. By John Avon. Beautiful island. Got the seagulls flying in the sky. We got one more to check out. All right. And this is the last deck we got. The white deck. The Flavor Judge. It's the chicken. Usually it's chicken fightings. Now the chicken is uh, judging the fightings. Let's see. Let's see. Got Flavor Judge, one and a white. It's a creature bird advisor, so you go to him for your questions. You got a werewolf creature and a goblin, and they're about to face off, and you got the referee. You know he's official. It's a 2 2 by Mike Burtis. Uh, tap, choose target spell or ability that, target permanent, uh, that targets a permanent you control, then ask a person outside the game 
if the story of what will happen makes sense, if they say no, sacrifice, flavor, judge, and counter that spell. Choose target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control, then ask a person outside the game if the story of what will happen makes sense. Uh, and now they're trying to make a brick wall. My property, fight a dinosaur uh, to the death. I have no idea. Strange. Got Frankie Peanuts. I think this is a reprint. Two and two uh, white Frankie Peanuts, the elephant clerk guy. But he likes his peanuts. He's got his big old stogie cigar and his nose. And you got this guy here dropping his cards. Legendary creature, elephant rogue. It's a 2 3. The beginning of your upkeep, you may ask target player yes or no question. If you do, that player answers the question truthfully and abides by the answer if able until end of turn. Don't cross him uh, or you'll end up sleeping with the mirror folk. So I guess you could be like. Are you going to play a spell this turn? And if they say yes or no, if they say no, they can't. If they say yes, they have to. So that's kind of fun. This is a fun card right here. I feel like this alongside the blue deck would be great by Thomas M. Baxa. Look at me. I'm a DCI. <laughs> this is how they pick uh, the rules or something. He's got a beer in his hand. And <laughs> all these cards throwing it. By Maro, by Mark uh, Rosewater, five and two white. Ban a card other than basic land card for the rest of the match. All cards of the name in any zone or sideboard are removed from the match. If you understand the DCI's rigorous decision making process, that's kind of fun. Making fun of themselves. Oh look, it's like um, one of those uh, playtest cards. It's uh, I don't even know. Two and two white. I don't know. Look at me. I'm R and D. Uh, enchantment. As look at me, I'm R&D, comes into play, choose a number, uh, and as enters a, what, choose a number, and second number, uh, one higher than, or one lower than the first number, all instances of the first chosen number, uh, in the full text of each permanent spells and cards in any zone of the second our, our change, what? I don't even know. This is hard to figure out. This is moat. They got moat in the background. They threw it over moat. That's fun. <laughs> you got styling, styling power, two and a white. He's busting out of the frames of champion until end of turn. And this turn, effects don't end. Mango fleas no longer, mango's fleas no longer bother him. But the family of goblins that had their moved in behind his left ear were starting to get really irritating. He's a giant. Goblins move in there, and he's got his little dog house there, letting you know he's mangoes by Richard Us uh, uh, Sardinha. Very cool. Got Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Look at that. It's a legendary artifact. Oh, it's not legendary. It's an artifact equipment sword. It's a 3 3. I mean, it's a 3 uh, equipment creature. Gets plus 2 plus 2 and has protection from rogues and clerics. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player. Uh, create a 4-4 gold dragon creature toggle when flying and roll a uh, d20, 20 side dice. If you roll a 20, repeat the process, equip 2 by Chris Rahib. Okay, interesting. I feel like they should have included two 20 side dice in here, to be honest. They really should have. By Syri, uh Candon Night Owl. He's actually this guy here. Uh, 3 and 2 white legendary creature bird knights. Got... Knight lifelink damage dealt by knights you control also cause you to give that much life. It's a 4 4. You pay white, uh, gains vigilance on the turn, activates ability only from sunrise to sunset, so you can't play it during night. You pay black, so light during the day, probably black at night, gains flying till on the turn, activate this ability only from sunset to sunrise. That's cool by Andela uh, Reddick. Uh, I really like that. It's like the seasonal card, except it's like a day cycle card. Got adorable kitten. You can put a bat kitten or something. One white, one one, roll six out of die. If you gain life, you gain life because of the result. Very cool. By Andrea Reddick. Cute little kitten playing with butterflies. And he caught, he caught something down there. Is it a lizard or something? Maybe. He got a wall. Literally busted out. It's like he punched a hole through the magic card. Two and a white. Instant. XL target attacking creature. Then remove it from the game. Then put it. Uh, and should they absolutely move from the freaking game zone forever? Have you seen me? No. By uh, Stefan Teppen. Interesting. It's just like busted out from existence. So like cards like uh, that Immortal Goblin that you can play from Exile. If you somehow do this on it, even though it's like a different format, you can 
get rid of it forever. Got MC, two and a white. It's a creature human rogue. It's got the bell right there, like ding, ding, ding. Uh, creature human rogue, zero, one. Whenever another creature enters a battlefield, you may stand up and say in a deep, booming voice, presenting. Uh, and the creature's name, if you do, put a woman counter on that creature. So you say it, give that creature a little bit more pump, uh, bump up. The ogre... Uh, uh, pleaded the match loss and got uh, downgraded to a warning by Quentin Hoover. Got go to jail like Monopoly. One white enchantment. When go to jail enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until go to jail leaves battlefield. That's a great card. Depending if you're upkeep, um, the player upkeep, the exiled card owner, that player rolls two sixes out of eight. If they roll doubles, sacrifice it. Go to jail. So this is pretty much taking a rule from Monopoly and putting it into magic together. That is so cool. By um, uh, Marco uh, Tedextria. You got Hummingbird. So you can do Hummingbird Cat. Drinking the Hummingbird Nectar right there. It's a giant one. Uh, creature Bird Flying. Uh, whenever you attack with two or more creatures, you do whatever the other card says. It's got Augment. It's a plus two, plus three. By Mark uh, Bellum. Knight of the Hokey Pokey. Uh, two, uh, generic, uh, two white. It's uh, got his feathered hat. And his horse has feathers. He's got his fingers pointing. Creature knights are 2-2. Two, two. It's got first strike. One and a white. Do the hokey pokey. Prevent all damage. The source of your choice would deal damage to knight of the hokey pokey. Do the hokey pokey. Choose an arm or leg uh, or your whole self and put it in. Put it out. Put it in. Shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey. Turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. By Kev Walker. That's fun. They got old guard. One and a white. It's an artifact creature. Cyborg soldier. So two one. It's like this sort of wrecking bot with an old man's head and a bat. He's like an old English policeman with his baton. I like that. Steampunk kind of vines by David uh, uh, Sladek. Uh, white tap uh, tap target creature without reminder text. Reminder text is any italicized text in parentheses. It explains the rules you already know. You say you're capable of flying. You got any proof of that? <laughs> you got an ordinary pony. And then you can make an unordinary pony. Uh, two and a white. It's a creature horse, not a pony. Two and a three. I guess ponies are horses. You may exile target non-horse creature you control that wasn't put in the battlefield with the ability to turn, then return it to the uh, battlefield under its owner's control. By uh, Andrea Reddick. So I guess you kind of flash something in and out. And there it is, the Paper Tiger. Uh, it's like an origami tiger. Fantastic art by Heather Hudson. Four generic for four, three, artifact creature cat. Creatures named Rock Lobster can't attack or block. So they kind of beat each other out. Love the art. Fantastic. You got a strutting turkey. Uh, white has a lot of these split cards. Three and a white. It's a host creature bird. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When this creature enters the battlefield, exile target creature card. If you convert a mana is two or less from your graveyard. If it has augment, combine it with the host you control. Otherwise, put it onto the battlefield. By Andrea Reddick. A uh, beautiful turkey. Really hyper-realistic looking. Really great job. And then you got the Underdome. And obviously, all of uh, the planes. Beautiful planes. Lovely sunset by Sam Burley. Alrighty, that is all of the cards in this set. So much fun to go through and check this out with you all. I know it was a bit of a longer video, but I just really enjoy stuff like this. I think this is such a fun set and fun idea. I like how it comes in like a box set. Definitely want to keep the box. You can literally throw it on your like uh, your gaming cupboard or something like that right next to your other board games. Bust it out and play it with your friends and just have like a fun, totally different, wacky, fun game of Magic. And I do like how there's five kind of decks that you mix together. So you can have so many different combinations of decks. It's just absolutely fantastic. So much repay value and so much fun. Super fun product. Really happy to review it and check it out with you all. Anyways, hope you're all doing wonderful today. Hope you're all staying safe. I hope you enjoy these type of videos. Let me know what you think. I just want to say thanks for stopping by. Keep on keeping on, and I'll catch you all in the next one.